talk today is on 3D printing. I decided to do my TED talk because in fifth grade I had to go to this, um, I went to the STEM Link 5 convention in fifth grade, it was for STEM field trip, and we had to uh, do three classes throughout the day, but we didn't get to choose what they were. I was put in one of the classes and it was 3D printing, and I did not want to go to that. But when I got in the classroom, it, I actually quite enjoyed it. So many of you probably know what 3D printing is, or have at least heard of it, but for those of you who don't, it's a process which a 3D printer additively builds 3D parts and layers from CAD data. 3D printing starts with a file, also known as CAD software. This file then has to be exported into a program that makes it three-dimensional with surfaces and vertices. In this program, the 3D object is then sliced into hundreds and maybe thousands of two-dimensional slices. The 3D printer reads these slices as building blocks and lands on the top one another to form the 3D object. So at the convention, I got this um, 3D printed poker chip and I'll pass it around, just don't bend it or anything because it could break. And it, um, it has many like layers in there, as you can see, if you just pass it around. So 3D printing is used in business to make things cheaper and more affordable and for a shorter lead time. 3D printing is used to make prosthetics, which makes it cheaper for the buyer and seller. 3D printing can also be used to print chocolate, and I may think this is, it's easier for a normal machine to print normal chocolate or Hershey Kiss than you're right. But for complex designs, such as these snowflakes or this bowl, it's much easier for a 3D printer. Now I have a quick about 25 second time lapse video of a 3D printer printing chocolate. So this is from the above view. So there's also a company called Natural Machines that um, use that, like, the idea of 3D printing food so much that they're coming out with a 3D printer that can print pizza and ravioli. You can even 3D print organs and tissues. So my mom works at the U of M, and about last week, they came out with a study that showed that they had successfully planted a 3D tissue in someone who had just had a heart attack. And so when tissues are 3D printed, they are used, um, there's a sample of your living cells in smart gel, and then the smart gel cools and dries around it and comes off and that's just your living cells left. And 3D printing can also be used for your own use or just for fun, such as making a phone case or a card holder. You can make hanging lights in your room, you just have to put in the lights yourself. You can make chess pieces or a cast. You can make shoes. An instrument, you just have to put the cork and the mouthpiece on, a speaker for your phone, or even a cute little dog tag for your dog. Uh, I have a, another quick time lapse video of um, a 3D printed castle. It's about 45 seconds long. This video, um, this this actually took about 30, no, 58 minutes to print, and it's about I think a foot and a half tall. This is probably done with a professional 3D printer. Do you know how much it weighs? No. Depending on the material, it might weigh quite a bit, though. What? It's a castle. <laughs> it's a castle. Now at the end, they just describe what you have to do. Okay, now that you know what 3D printers can do, you may be thinking you want one. I mean, I know, I sure did. But so the entry level printer is the cheapest one, ranging from two to four hundred dollars. And these are not durable; they're very noisy. They cannot print many materials, and they only print very small objects. But are very good printer if you want to get the hang of 3D printing for a low cost. The hobbyist printer is the next one, ranging from $300 to $1,500. And these printers can't run for a very long time, but yeah. The enthusiast 3D printers, um, so our high school has 3D printers at it, I know. I'm not sure if it's the enthusiast one, I'm pretty sure it is, but it might be the professional ones. 
The enthusiast 3D printers are used in high schools and middle schools most of the time. And these can use a very wide range of materials but often need repairs. They have good quality and they typically range from $15 to $3,500. The professional printers are used in most businesses, have very good quality and higher speeds. And these usually range from $35 to $6,000. $3,500 to $6,000. And the industrial printers are the last one. These range from $20,000 to $100,000. And most companies use them. You probably won't find this in someone's house because of the size and the cost. So 3D printing is still a very new technology and one we're learning much about. So I hope you guys learned something about it.